magnetic switch is built from three parts. There's the base and the mount that get glued together, and then the top switch, which is what you move from one position to another to activate the magnet. So my first step is gluing the templates on the Baltic birch ply that I'm going to use to build this. Now thicknesses can vary a bit. For the base thickness, you want to use the same thickness material that you're going to mount this on so that you can just drill the size hole that you need. For the mount you want to keep it fairly thin uh, but can't really go any thinner than quarter inch so I've found quarter inch or maybe three eighths if, if that's what you have works pretty well. And for the top switch you pretty much need to use three quarter material. Now in my case on this build I didn't have any three quarter material left uh, so I just glued up two pieces together uh, to get thick enough that I could mount the magnets in that top switch. Uh, but ideally I would have had three quarter ply and for my next batch of magnets I went out and bought some. So next we're going to deal with the mount which is probably the trickiest part of the build. Now this can be done a number of ways but the way I do it is to first drill halfway through the material with a bit that's sized for the center rod. Now that's three quarter inch for the small magnet, one inch for the big magnet and then I drill all the way through with a quarter inch bit. So that quarter inch bolt is going to be directly in the middle of the mount template. And I use this bolt and nut to register with my router circle cutting jig, or in this case, 60 degree arc cutting jig, uh, to first recess a slot for the head of the screw that I'm going to use. And this recess is deep enough uh, that the head of the screw won't be poking out at all. And then I make a second smaller slot that goes all the way through so that the screw can travel. And next I drill the center holes on all three of the parts. Now again this is three quarter inch for the small magnet, one inch for the big magnet. Cut them out on the bandsaw. and then drill the mounting holes on the mount, which is really however large you need them to be for the screws that you're gonna to use to mount it. Now next I glue the mount and the base together with the center steel rod glued into place in the mount and the base. And it's important to note that I'm screwing this up right here because the base should be glued onto the mount on the side with the recesses for the screw head, not the other side, because you want them hidden when the base is down. Somehow my brain just really wants to get this screwed up because I did the same thing on the next batch of magnets. Uh, so don't be like me, do it right. Now next I drill holes for the magnets in both the base and the top switch. And to do that I use this 90 degree jig with the plugs for either side magnet. I built it to do both. The wood plug is better than the metal one because you can drill all the way through and don't have to clean up anything at the bottom. So after drilling a hole I can just rotate to the next mark and drill another one until I have six evenly spaced holes all the way around the workpiece. And it's the same operation for the glued up base and mount. Next you drill out the holes for the posts all the way around the body of both the switch and the glued up mount and base. Now my template looks weird here because I kind of screwed it up and had to re-edit it. You won't have this problem. It'll just have all the circles in the center points marked for you like this one does. And now I put some countersinks on the holes in the mount and next it's time to put the magnets in and the steel posts to finish this thing off. Now it's really simple how to put this together. All you need to do is reverse the polarity on the magnets every other one. So what I do generally is just have a line of magnets together so I know they're lined up. I just go every other one, so three of the six, skipping every other one with the direction the same, and then do the other three with the direction reversed. That's all you have to do for this to work. Okay, that statement I just made is true. All you need to do for this to work properly is reverse the polarity in every other magnet, do that on the base and the top, and it works. One little nuance that I don't want to trip you up, when you put these together, I like to have this be the off position, not magnetized. Then I like to turn it, the tightening motion, 
to magnetize it. But you might find that when you do that, you're, when you're in this tightened position, you're actually not magnetized. And when you do the loosening motion, now you're magnetized. So if that ends up happening, all you need to do is turn it 180 degrees. Okay, so now we're not magnetized here. You tighten it, which feels natural, and it's magnetized. And once you're done with that, you can glue and pound in the posts. I'm not using glue here. I did in my next batch of magnets. You don't really need it. The friction fits generally good enough, but it can't hurt. And it's done. Now I didn't show putting the screws in to hold it all together, but that's pretty simple. I think you can figure it out. And you've got yourself a magnetic switch. And that is how to build your own switchable magnet. Hope you found that interesting at least. If you go to the link in the description, you'll see a purchase spot on my website where you can get the templates for the large and small magnets uh, for $5. And you also get the best source that I have found anyway for the magnets that, that are used to build these. Now, the small switch magnets cost you about $10 uh, and the large cost you about $13. And the steel rods and the plywood, especially you have to buy it, cost a little bit more. So just for comparison, this is about equivalent to the MagSwitch 150 and this to the MagSwitch 95. Uh, and those cost about $37 and $20 for the big and small one. So it's a little cheaper to build your own, but honestly, if all you care about is saving money and you don't have a lot of time, and this isn't an interesting, an inherently interesting thing to do, it's probably not, not the right way to go for you. Uh, if money is extraordinarily tight, or if you just kind of think it's cool to build your own, then, then maybe go for it. Uh, but it's not a, a huge money saver, and it does take a lot of time. This is not the simplest build in the world, as you just saw. Just to touch on a couple things that I glossed over in the video, cutting all these metal plugs to go into the body of the, of the magnet, that takes a lot of time if you don't have a saw like mine. I have a, a bandsaw, a metal cutting bandsaw. Hacksawing all of these by hand, you'll drive yourself crazy. I mean, maybe you could do it. You'd have to make some kind of little jig thing. Just to be aware, I don't want to oversell this. Uh, that's something that you kind of need a saw for. But that did get me thinking about a solution that maybe you'll hear more about in the future. We'll see. Also, in the course of flattening and tuning these, you really want the metal posts to be flush with the wood. Uh, you might do some sanding or filing, and that causes lots of little magnetized shavings to get stuck to these which is a real pain to clean up. Best thing I found to do is put it right next to the intake of your dust collection and use a compressed air gun to just blow all of those into the vacuum. So high pressure and vacuum at the same time takes care of it uh, pretty quickly. So that's it for the magnets. Check that out if you're interested. Also, you may have noticed that I have a logo on this hoodie. This is my new logo. You will also see on the website, inclined, and that is meant to extend to everyone. Everyone who's watching, who's mechanically inclined, who's inclined to build things. I wanted this to be about the whole group, even though it has my name in it. And if you're digging that, you can check out the Inclined merch on the website as well. So take a look. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.